The gravitational force due to a uniform disk. Mass capital M is distributed uniformly over a disk of radius A. Find the gravitational force magnitude and direction between this disk-shaped mass and a particle with mass M located at a distance x above the center of the disk. As you can see in the figure, it's on the z-axis. Does your result reduce to the correct expression as x becomes very large? We have an uniform aerial mass distribution. Um, it says it's uniformly over a disk. And therefore, we, we need to consider the aerial mass density. Now, area of the disk is pi times the radius squared. So it is pi a squared. The mass density for this uniform mass distribution is uh, sigma, which is the total mass, capital M, divided by the area pi a squared, because it's a uniform mass distribution. Now, if I consider any mass element on this disk, dm, which is the mass density times the differential area dA, this will be uh, sigma r dr d theta, r dr d theta and that you can see here if i go to a distance r from the center then i change uh, r by a differential amount dr r d theta is the arc length and that's the area of this small region here which carries with it a mass dm differential mass so that differential mass is uh, basically capital M over pi a squared, the aerial mass density, multiplied by r dr d theta. All right. Now, we're going to look at the force between this uh, particle with mass M and this disk. And when I consider this mass element here at this distance from this particle, the force, the gravitational force in general, may have an x component, a y component, which is going into the page here, and a z component. So if I look at the x component of the force, so if this one has an x component of this force here, if I pick a symmetric element, there will be an x component which will be canceling it out. So uh, from the symmetry of the problem, I can see that due to symmetry, without doing any calculations, I can always find a matching mass element on opposite side, which gives me an equal and opposite in direction force on the x-axis. Integral dfx will become zero. And the same argument applies to the y component. So integral dfy will become zero. So it's quite clear that um, the y component here, which is basically the projection of this to into the page here, if I pick a mass element that is symmetric with respect to this, it will produce a negative uh, j hat uh, for the force y component, and therefore they will be canceling in pairs. However, for the z component, dfz, it's going to be df multiplied with cosine phi as you can see here this is df multiplied with cosine phi it is in minus k hat direction so you can see uh, z is in my uh, convention pointing up and i can note here that this is going to be in minus k hat direction and all such mass mass elements will produce a component in minus k hat direction, so they will all add up. Now, what is the total force? Uh, what is df? It is uh, g, gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant, mass of this element, dm, d capital M, multiplied with mass of the particle, divided by the distance between them squared. So this is 
basically uh, 90 degrees. So this uh, is the vertical axis uh, perpendicular to the plane of the disk. So R square plus X square is the distance between the radial distance between M and D capital M uh, squared. So this is going to be X squared plus R squared. X squared plus R squared is this distance squared. It's the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So this gives me G multiplied with uh, M capital M, M capital M over pi A squared, because for DM I'm substituting M over pi A squared, R D R D theta. So this is going to have R d r d theta and in the denominator i also have x square plus r square and from the geometry i note that what cosine phi is cosine phi is x divided by this hypotenuse so it is going to be x divided by square root of x square plus r square so this total length here is uh, square root of x square plus r square all right and uh, if i perform the integration to find fz it's integral dfz this is the integral r goes from 0 to a the total radius the angle phi, uh, the angle theta, uh, which is this angle here, uh, it, it goes from 0 to 2 pi to exhaust all the possibilities here. So it is integral 0 to 2 pi. Uh, then I have G M capital M, M capital M, X, over pi a square for cosine phi i have substituted this and then here i have r dr d theta r dr d theta divided by x square plus r square so this df is multiplied by cosine phi this multiplied by the square root gives me a power 3 over 2 so let me write this carefully this is 3 over 2 okay and if I take the uh, theta integration first the theta integration there's no theta dependent uh, variable here just gives me a factor of 2 pi so 2 pi and pi will cancel and I will be left with 2 so this will give me uh, 2g m capital m x divided by a square and i still have another integral i have to perform from 0 to a uh, i have r dr so i have r dr and in the denominator i have x square plus r square to the power 3 over 2 so here I note that the integral 0 to 2 pi d theta gave me just 2 pi. So in order to perform this remaining integrals, let's say u square is equal to x square plus r square. So that 2u du will be equal to 2r dr. x is a constant. When r is equal to, uh, so 2s will cancel. When r is equal to 0, u will be equal to x. When r is equal to a, u will be equal to x squared plus a squared inside the square root. Okay, so this integral now turns into fz equals 2g capital M M x divided by a square integral the first limit of u which is x 
to the uh, second limit of u, which is square root of x square plus a square. Uh, now for r dr, I substitute u du. So this is u du. For x square plus r square, I substitute u square. u square to the power 3 over 2 becomes u cube. So this is the uh, basically integral of du over u square. And that gives me the answer 2g capital M M x over a square minus 1 over u u to the power minus 1. If you take the derivative, you get minus u to the power minus 2. With the minus sign, this becomes 1 over u square. And this has to be evaluated between a and square root of a square plus x square, the limits of u. Uh, that, and therefore, I obtain fz is equal to 2g capital M, M, X over A square. Now this is evaluated at uh, the first limit was um, X, not A. So X to uh, square root of A square plus X square. This is the first limit. This is the second limit. So uh, in instead of doing the uh, square root of a square plus x square first, I do x first so that the minus sign is taken care of. So this becomes 1 over x minus 1 over square root a square plus x square. Normally, this is 1 over square root a square plus x square minus 1 over x, but there's the minus sign here. So operating the minus sign, this is what I get. And this can be written as fz is equal to, if I take this into 1 over x parentheses, 2g uh, capital M m over a square. So what I'm doing here is uh, multiplying this by x. So I multiply this by x, multiply this by x, and divide this by x. So this gives me 2g m m over a square. Uh, the x's cancel in the first term. 1 minus x over square root of a square plus x square. And that's my final answer for the force, which is pointing in uh, minus k hat direction towards the center of the disk. All right, so that's in minus k hat direction. Now, there is another uh, question I have to answer, which is what happens as x becomes very large? So let's check our answer in the limit x becomes much greater than a. Now, if I rewrite my force uh, magnitude, it was 2g capital M M divided by a squared, 1 minus x squared plus a squared to the power minus 1 over 2. And this can be rewritten as 2g capital M M over a squared, 1 minus There was an uh, x here, which I have forgotten. So there's this x. So I take this into x parentheses. x divided by x, uh, 1 plus 
a square over x square a square over x square to the power minus 1 over 2. So if you take this into x parentheses, x square parentheses, x square to the minus 1 half gives you 1 over x. x square divided by x square is 1. a square divided by x square is a square over x square. Now I have obtained this 1 plus a square over x square term which is much less than 1, and this is to the power minus 1 half. This is approximately 1 minus 1 over 2 a squared over x squared. So we're using this 1 plus uh, x to the n is approximately 1 plus an x in the limit x is much less than 1. So here what I'm calling, uh, this is a mathematical relationship that's for the power series expansion of 1 plus x to the power n for very small x. And that gives me 2g capital M M divided by a squared 1 minus 1 plus a squared divided by 2x squared approximately and this 1 and minus 1 cancel and the final answer is g capital M M divided by x squared which is the gravitational force between two point masses M uh, capital M and M separated by a distance X. And that's the answer we were looking for. In the limit, uh, x is much greater than uh, a. The result reduces to the expected uh, conclusion, which is if this goes really far away, this appears to be a point. This appears to be a point. And we have the force between two point masses. That is g product of the masses divided by the distance squared.